Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Hyper. Glad to hear your voice. Now oh, I'm glad to hear from you too. And how is New York City this morning? Uh, New York City is in turmoil, as you know. Everyone's still fighting and arguing about uh, Trump and Clinton. That's the big thing to this day. The media is pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and what are some of the things you're pushing on the Israelites in New York? Mm-hmm. They refuse to give us any airplay at all. Mm-hmm. The powers that be. Yeah, I, I, I was wondering why, 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 why? The greatest, what we're teaching is the greatest kept secret from the time of slavery. Mm-hmm. Uh, America has spent trillions of dollars to keep the identity of the children of the slave trade secret. They want us to be called Jamaicans, Trinidadians, Barbadians, Afro-Americans, anything but what God says. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They don't want us to return to the truth of who we are. All right. I realize that. I realize that that you have a total a blackout. Um, nothing that um, you'll put um forward the the mainstream media will um you know pick it they they, they just uh, cast a blind eye to what you're saying exactly when i was when i was young in the truth they had us on like maybe two talk shows yes the stipulation was you are not allowed to read the bible mm-hmm. even recently a radio station a popular one here in new york called us to come down actually in north carolina they said you can come on the show but the stipulation is no Bible references. Mm-hmm. So that, where that going? What good is it? The people must know our truth, our ancestry is in the Bible. Yes. No, no, no. You're going to offend too many of our sponsors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, may God help America, eh? <laughs> yeah, oh, right. Hey, it's our total opposite. <laughs> All right, today, my friend, we're going to be looking at a very topical, contentious, uh, and somewhat controversial uh, topic. We're going to be looking at uh, the Immaculate Conception. This is a popular teaching in Christendom, uh, the Immaculate Conception. And... um, uh, we have uh, with us, for those of you just joining us, Bishop Nathaniel, and uh, he's a man who uh, speaks on uh, religious matters, and um, he's always quoting from the scriptures, uh, always going to the Bible. He, he does not just uh, speak from a historical point of view, he also goes deep in the Bible. All right, uh, Bishop, um, the Immaculate conception is this uh, biblically based the immaculate conception is based on ancient babylonian and egyptian lies mm. it has its root in ice in uh nimrod and tammuz mm-hmm. followed by isis horus and seth yes. if you've ever visited the catholic the roman catholic church you will yes. see three uh alphabet symbols in the Catholic Church, which is I-H-S. Yes. Uh, and they say it's Latin. Mm-hmm. However, it stands for Isis, Horus, and Seth, the Trinity, the unholy triune union uh, of Isis, Horus, and Seth. That's where it is founded. Mm-hmm. So Christianity follows this, and as I've spoken to you many times before, you have the infamous National Council of Churches along with the World Council of Churches under the guidance of the Pope, mm-hmm. where they dictate meaning of scripture. For example, Matthew 1, 18, is where many of these things, this, this lie is based. Uh, when you read Matthew 1, 18, I'll give you just one example, I'll show you, where it says, um, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother, Mary, was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. So this verse and this verse alone is where the Immaculate Conception deception lie is founded. Mm-hmm. However, Mr. Hyper, you and I know that when you read, you must begin at the beginning. Right. Uh, even in the beginning of this chapter, 
Verse 1 says, the book of the generation mm -hmm. of Christ. When you examine the word generation, the root word of generation is gene. Yes. So hence the word genealogy. Right. Christ. And it gives you a list of all his four fathers and mothers in the record here. But the Catholic Church says, well, ignore verse 1 through 17. Ignore that. Mm -hmm. And just start with verse 18, where it says, before they came together. And they interpret that as before they had sexual union. Mm -hmm. But that is not what that means, Mr. Hyper. When, for example, when you start from verse 1, it clearly contradicts Immaculate Conception. It gives you all the forefathers. It's like, wait a minute, it's naming everybody here. Then, <laughs> when it says before they came together, Mr. Hyper, it means before the marriage celebration, mm -hmm. before the wedding feast, I'll use biblical words, mm -hmm. before the wedding feast, she was found with child yes. of the Holy Ghost. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, when I was a youth, when I was a youth, if a young lady was found with a child before she was married, she was often humiliated and sent away. Mm -hmm. The family was greatly ashamed. That was always the case in, in the scriptures. You had to have a wedding feast where your father and mother honored the marriage feast. Okay. It was not the case with Mary and Joseph. They mm -hmm. got together before the feast. Mm -hmm. So Mary was greatly ashamed. Joseph was greatly ashamed. They wanted to put her away. Yes. That, and the angel said, who oh, when we jump down? Let me jump down. Verse 20. Yes. I started 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Mm -hmm. And while he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Now watch this. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Mm -hmm. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Meaning it is according to scripture. Right. According to prophecy. That's what the angel was saying. Notice the angel called Mary his wife. Yes. Why? Because there was a law on that. There was a law when you go to uh, Exodus 22. I'm sure your listeners, they should be familiar with it by now. Mm -hmm. Exodus 22, 16 says, And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. That's why the angel said, Don't fear to take Mary your wife. You entice her, you lay with her, take her. She's yours. The child is according to prophecy. Yes. So that's what it means. Now, when you rewatch this decipher, hey, expound on that. Expound on that a little bit for for um for for us, um, Bishop. Before you move on, you 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 made mention of uh, the uh, uh, prophetic um, aspect of um, uh, Jesus Christ coming into um, the world. Um, expound on that a little bit uh, for me, because that is also um, contentious. With a lot of teachings out there where that is concerned. Right, 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 right. Um, let me see, let me see. When you read uh, Isaiah 9 and 6, for unto us a child is born, mm -hmm. unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Uh, on the increase of his government, and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of david and upon the kingdom to order it to establish it with judgment and with justice for henceforth even forevermore the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this so it was always prophesied that a coming king was on his way the coming messiah is on his way what was always prophesied about, even when you read Isaiah 7 and 14, which are two chapters prior to previous to that, it reads, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The term virgin, Mr. Hyper, refers to a young girl of marriageable age. Yes. That's what virgin also makes reference to. 
But isn't it really immaculate since, um, you know, Joseph didn't have any connection with Mary at that time? Um, Joseph did not uh, knew his wife at that time. Isn't that immaculate? Okay, when you, what scripture are you making reference to, Messiah? No, no, I, I, based on what you're explaining with the prophecy, I am I'm just asking that, um, <laughs> right. Yes. There are two references. When you read Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2, I believe it is. Let me look and make sure I'm, I'm paraphrasing Luke somewhat. Or, or Luke chapter again. 1 verse 28. That's the one I was looking at. It's Luke uh, chapter... Yes, uh, 2. Luke chapter 2. There's two references when the angel spoke to Mary. Okay, okay. Um, if Mary said, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Remember, she was a young girl. Mm -hmm. She hadn't laid down with a man at that time. So the angel said, what shall be performed of you shall be of the Holy Ghost. That's what the angel had told Mary. Yes. Um, and this is what many of the Christians are unaware of. Okay, but when you read scripture, for example, John 1, 45. Watch this, Mr. Hyper. This is what most people fail to realize. Matthew, Mark, Luke... John chapter 1, verse 45. Look what they said about the birth of Christ. It says, here we go. It says, John 1, 45. Here it goes. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. I'm going to read that last part. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Mm -hmm. Many people will read that, and because of the Catholic Church witchcraft, will erase that from their mind and go, no, no, he cannot be the son of Joseph. However, here we go, let's get some more. Matthew 13, verse 55. It reads, listen closely, is, regarding Christ, this is what the Pharisees said, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers, James, Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? So not only was Christ the son of Joseph, he had brothers and sisters that Mary further had. Mm -hmm. Most churches refuse to see this. They go, no, no. Erase that from your Bibles with a black marker. But, 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 there, but there's a but there's a popular teaching that uh, there's a popular teaching that Mary remains a virgin, that she did not have any other children. That, hey, that is that is that's not in the apocrypha. However, there is a book called the Book of Mary or the Book of Thomas where it states that. But this is why the forefathers never included those books into the the, the, the writings of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it would contradict what we just read here, verse 55 of Matthew 13. Yes. It's not this the carpenter's son, is not his mother called Mary, and his brothers, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas, mm -hmm. and his sisters. Are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? So that's a obvious contradiction, saying that Mary was an ever virgin, so that's why the fathers never put those diabolical writings into the canon of Scripture. Now, watch this. When yes. we read Luke 11, mm -hmm. there was a woman who wanted to glorify or deify Mary as the Queen of Heaven. Yes. When you read Luke 11, 27, she wanted to glorify Mary. Watch this. Luke 11, 27. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, said unto Christ, Blessed is the womb that bear thee, and the past which thou hast sucked. But he said, and Christ responded, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. So Christ said, the true blessing comes in hearing the laws of God and doing what is written. That is the response to Mary being the queen or glorified in such aspect. Now, fiber. Now it's about to get heavy. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very good to have reading comprehension. And I know many of your listeners are an educated audience. 
they have a great understanding, but watch Hebrews chapter 2, what Paul says about the birth of Christ. Hebrews chapter 2, listen good, all your listeners, it says, uh, Hebrews 2, 16, for verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. That's the beginning of the verse, Mr. Hyper. Mm -hmm. Let's examine this reading with reading comprehension. He did not take on him the nature of angels. Let's examine that. Let's pause. The nature of angels means what? That celestial body. That having no mother or father. Do you understand? Yes. He's just born. Tell us to no, Christ didn't come like that. It said he took on him the seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Now, your listeners must understand, what does the Bible mean when it makes reference to seed? What does it mean by the seed of Abraham? That's explained in Leviticus 15 about the seed. Leviticus 15, 16, it says, And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash his flesh in water and be unclean until the evening. And every garment and every skin, whereon is the seed of copulation, shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. When the Bible makes reference to the seed of Abraham, it's the seed of copulation, which means what, Mr. Hyper? Sperm. Yes. That's what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. So when we go back to Hebrews 2.16 where it says, He took on him the seed of Abraham. Watch the next verse. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. It said he was, it behooved him to be made like his brothers, Mr. Hyper. Mm -hmm. We just read about his brothers, Simon, Judas, and Joseph. How were they made? It wasn't through immaculate conception. It was through the seed of Abraham. Seed of Abraham. Yes. Seed of Joseph. That's why Matthew 1, verse 1 through 6, 17 is very important. Mm -hmm. It gives you the genealogy of his fathers and mothers. You understand, Mr. Hyper? Yes. So where does this teaching of the Queen of Heaven comes from? Because based on based on what you're saying now, that is uh, erroneous. Um, it is erroneous. So, so where does this teaching comes from? Was um, was it practiced in Bible days by the Samaritans or or the Canaanites or any of those tribes? Yeah, it was. It was glorified and exalted from the time of Babylon. And really, it, it, it goes into the teaching of the Egyptians. Uh, let me decide it briefly. Uh, in Jeremiah mm -hmm. chapter 44 and verse 12. Yes. Let me look at it. Let me look at it. Jeremiah 44. Uh, let me look, let me look, let me look. Yes. I'll start at 17. No, I'll start at 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Paphos, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouths, to burn incense unto the queen of heaven. The queen of heaven in Egypt was Isis. Okay. The queen of heaven in Babylon was Seranicus. Mm -hmm. It's the same deity. Yes. Her name was changed throughout time. When so, you read the New Testament in Acts, she was called Diana. Right. When you read the Canaanite goddess Astarte or Ashtaroth, mm -hmm. that's where you get the word Easter, yes. which is the goddess of fertility. Mm -hmm. Why America uses the bunny rabbit to symbolize Easter, because the bunny rabbit is a fertile animal. It has babies, quick, 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 quick. Yes. The eggs symbolize, when you look at the ancient goddess Ashtaroth or Diana, she was a black goddess that had multitude of breasts. She had like 26 breasts. Yes, yes, but yes. Because it was the goddess of fertility. It was about sexual orgies. Mm -hmm. Having baby after baby and then sacrifice those babies to the idol god. Yes. That's where Easter comes from. 
That's where the buddy comes from. That's where the queen of heaven is based upon. And America, from the time of our start from Constantine, the Council of Nicaea, all the way up to America, adopted it. They glorified and deified Mary, and they called her the new queen of heaven and changed her color to Caucasian, made her white, like an Edomite. All right, 1032 is my time here, Bishop. We're, we're going to take a quick commercial break. But uh, my question to you immediately following the break um, will be this. Um, there's a popular teaching that Mary is sinless. She has never sinned. Was <laughs> sinless. And I want you to address that for me after the break. After the break, right, right here on Vibes Radio. We're um, here on another Tuesday um, with uh, Bishop Nathaniel. Do remember that Bishop Nathaniel will be in Jamaica in July. He's going to be in Sablamar, here in Black River, St. Elizabeth, amongst other places. And um, um, a bird whispered something to me and tell me that he will also be in Mandeville. So um, Bishop Nathaniel will be in town in July. We take the commercial break right here on Vibes Radio. Stick and stay with us. Okay, yes, I feel good, 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 and it's good to be back, and it's now exactly at 10.35, right here on Vibes Radio, and of course, we have with us uh, this morning as... Uh, for usual on a Tuesday morning when the clock strikes 10, Bishop Nathaniel, and uh, we're looking uh, this morning at uh, the topic, the Immaculate Conception, and uh, just before we went to the break, um, I had posed a question to Bishop, um, asking him to comment on uh, uh, Mary being sinless as uh, uh, being taught by a lot of uh, churches in Christendom. Welcome back, Bishop. Um, yes, yes, sir. I like to call it the Immaculate Deception uh, because the teaching that Christ is immaculate comes from ancient Babylon and Egypt. Now, for anyone to think that Mary was sinless, yes. it's ridiculous because the scripture says in Romans, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Now, for the script for these Christian theologists who say Mary is sinless, this shows further proof they don't know the Bible. When you read Luke chapter two, from verse eighteen down, where it talks about Mary, I actually start at verse twenty one. Luke. Um, it seems as if we have lost uh, Bishop there, uh, have we? Yes, we have lost uh, Bishop there. We'll try to reconnect with uh, Bishop uh, in a little while right here on Vibes Radio. Just about 10.37 is your time right here uh, on the Big V. And of course, we are looking at the topic today, the uh, Immaculate Conception, to which Bishop Nathaniel says, he prefers to call it the Immaculate Deception. All right. All right. So uh, we're standing by to uh, uh, reconnect with uh, Bishop in uh, New York City right here on Vibes Radio. So um, the question that I posed uh, to Bishop was that, you know, a lot of churches, um, they teach that uh, Mary um, was sinless. Uh, the, the thought that uh, um, Mary was sinless since Jesus um, uh, never sinned uh, so the one of the teachings read the Immaculate Conception was that the biblical solution to this problem was that Jesus himself was miraculously protected from being polluted by sin while he was inside Mary's womb. Hence, Mary was sinless. That's um, uh, a part of the teaching. It's, we have Bishop Nathaniel back with us. Welcome back, Bishop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on. Well, I guess it is the immaculate disconnection. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. All right, sir. Anyhow, let's continue. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, let's continue now. Okay. When you look at Luke chapter 2, regarding Mary being uh, sinless, sinless, right. The policy of that is Luke 2, verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, 
His name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Mm -hmm. But the days of her, meaning Mary's purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. So now, you have to ask yourself, what was the days of Mary's purification? What is that making reference to? You have to go to the book of Leviticus, chapter 12, the law of Moses. Uh, we'll start at verse 2. I'll read 2 to 6. I'll try and read quickly, but watch this. Yes. Speak, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of the separation for infirmity, shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing or come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, meaning a girl, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in a separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. That's a total of eighty. Watch this. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or turtle dove for a sin offering. Mm. The door of the tabernacle. Mary had to bring forth a sin offering. That's what it was all about. So yes. for them to say Mary was sinless, these people are more, or I don't want to get mean spirited, but they, they, they are paid agents of the Roman Catholic Church of the state. That's all I can say. But, but what? Are they are just ignorant. Mm. They need to quickly repent and come join us. But what about um, uh, the school of thought that uh, um, the, the law of Moses has done away with? So uh, the, the, you, you read uh, from Leviticus, um, you know, that's the Old Testament. That's done away with. Uh, that was a part of the shadow um, that the Bible speaks about, the shadow of things to come. Now that Jesus... Um, uh, came on when Jesus came on the scene, all of that was done away with. Um, those kind of rituals are irrelevant. Uh, not at all, not at all, not at all. People have it in the wrong context. Remember, at this time, Christ was eight days old. Yes, so he had to do the sin offering, she had to do that. Mm -hmm. But now, just in case, I want you to see what you just said. Mr. Yes, but is the connection? Yes, because many people, the cat, the white man, I'll say that I'll, I'll blame it the white man. <laughs> the white man teaches black people that Christ was not like us, so that we would find it far fetched to keep the commandments that he taught. Mm -hmm. To read Matthew five, Mr. Hyper, Matthew five, watch this five and seventeen, because the same thought came up during the time of Christ. He says, I'm going to read what he says, Matthew 5, 17. Sit not that I am come to destroy the law, all the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Yes. So all be fulfilled. We are still on earth, Mr. Hyper. I still see heaven above us. Do you? Mm -hmm. And commandments, the laws of the full effect. What laws have been abolished? What laws? What he said to all be fulfilled. Watch Paul, the apostle. Paul, everyone's favorite apostle, Mr. Hyper. Yes. Told you and I what laws were done away with. <laughs> when you read um, Hebrews chapter 10, it says. So it says, uh, I'll start at 3. But in those sacrifices, Hebrews 10 and 3, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither has pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Taketh away the first means what? Taketh away the first covenant of animal sacrifice. 
that he may establish the second covenant, the new covenant. Mm -hmm. Christ died on the cross. Paul explains to you and I what part of the law was done away, what was fulfilled in Christ. Yes. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. That was it, Mr. Hyper. And nothing else. Things that pertain to sacrifice. It was just the sacrificial aspect of the of uh, the law that was removed and nothing else. Those things that pertain, like for example, the Levite had to do the sacrifice. That part had to go too. Because remember, Christ was of what tribe? The tribe of Judah. Right. So that's all those things that pertain to the temple. Remember, even the temple itself, you had to go there. It was destroyed in 70 AD. So what would you and I do now? We mm -hmm. could do nothing. That's why the importance of the sacrifice of Christ, so that all Israel, all 12 tribes could come back and be and have salvation. That was the importance of Christ's sacrifice. And this is what many of our people have yet to realize because of being indoctrinated yes. by the Catholic Church. Oh, Mr. Hyper, I forgot this. Acts 2 and 30, watch this. Then this <laughs> watch this. Men, Acts 2 and 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, mm -hmm. both dead and buried, and his sepulchres with us unto this day. Yes. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Let's examine that for a moment, Mr. Eichler. What does it mean of the fruit of David's loins, according to the flesh, mm -hmm. he would raise up Christ? Mm-hmm. Did people like to say Christ's birth was just spiritual? No. It said, of the fruit of David's loins, what comes out of your loins? Let what it, comes out of your penis? It's the same seed. It's the same seed that the Bible refers to. Yes. As was uh, with the case of Abraham. That's right. And we're reading Acts 2, 29 and 30. You mean these Christian theologians never read this? They've mm -hmm. read it. They've been paid to deceive us. You understand, Mr. Hyper? Mm -hmm. This is the greatest conspiracy ever pulled over our people. We must repent of our sins and keep the commandments as the Israelites. That and nothing else. Only then will we have salvation. Only Ex then. Explain this for me because um, this is also... Um heavily thought as well and uh, this they they um you know a lot of churches they they pushed this agenda to to say that since christ was sinless mary had to be sinless as well to to um for her to um to be carrying um the pure christ she had to be pure as well and pure here referred to um referred to being sinless as well well if you notice mr hype but they never use any bible reference for that i'm yeah. waiting for the scripture that says mary was sinless i just read that she offered a sin sacrifice a sin offering yes but they will never give you scripture they'll give you talk of mouth mm -hmm. they dream something the white man threw on television and they run with it Yes. Instead of asking, prove it in Bible, prove it in Scripture. Mm -hmm. You see the fallacy, watch this in the Bible. Titus chapter 1 and verse 14. Yes. Paul reminded the, the, his young man, Titus, which is also for us, about these man made doctrines. Uh, if I can find it, I'm putting my glasses on and turning pages at the same time. Yes. Titus chapter 1 and verse 14, it reads. Uh, here we go, here we go. Mm, that's Timothy, that's not Titus. Here we go. Uh, wait, okay, Titus 1.14. It says, uh, Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. This is what we've been following. We've been following Jewish fables and commandments of men. What men? The white men. That's what we've been following for all these centuries of slavery and servitude and captivity. It is time for us to wake up and shake the dust from us. Yes. See clearly what the Word of God is saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you know, something just dropped on me, uh, Bishop, while you're speaking. Uh, we are looking at the Immaculate Conception. How could Mary be conceived without sin if her mother was sinful? Because her mother and father were 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 uh, 
uh, uh, did Mary, mother and father, immaculately uh, conceptualize as well? I, exactly. I, 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 I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. Just, just, just thinking. You're absolutely right on that. And you know what's, what's very important? Sometimes people like to uh, look at the genealogy of Christ. I'll show you this real quick. Uh, when you look at the genealogy of Christ in the book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 15, yes. it says, In Eliud begat Eleazar, in Eleazar begat Mason, and the son begat Jacob. Watch this. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, mm -hmm. or Christ. So now, when you go to the book of Luke, it says this, Luke chapter 3 and verse 23, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. You see this part where it says the son of Heli here, but then in, in Matthew, it says the son of of Jacob. Mm -hmm. You examine Heli. Heli was Mary's father. Heli was the father-in-law of Joseph. Where opposed to Matthew chapter 1, Jacob was uh, Joseph's father. Heli was, jo was Joseph's father-in-law. So the genealogy in Matthew is Joseph. The genealogy in Luke is Mary. Mm -hmm. This is what some people have yet to realize. Okay, they go, oh no, there's contradictions, I'm confused. They need to just be silent, listen, and learn. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so, so. Listen and learn. Okay. With, with this, with this uh, teaching that you call the deception now, um, this teaching basically puts uh, the Israelites, who are the black man, as you put it out there um, in Babylon, so to speak, with this kind of teaching. Yes, 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 exactly. This is why, uh, very important, because I'm glad you mentioned Babylon. Back in Matthew 1, it says, watch this, verse 17. Matthew 1, verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David to the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away unto Babylon unto Christ of 14 generations. Why are they mentioning the captivity of Babylon when they get the birth of Christ? Because Israel went into Babylon into captivity because of sin. We needed a savior. This is why we're in America, Babylon the Great, because we need a savior. Okay? Why are we in captivity, you and I? Because we need a savior to save us mm -hmm. because of sin, our sin. Okay? Mm -hmm. Christ came to deliver us from the bondage of sin. Captivity is a result of sin. This is why, Mr. Hyper, when you read Luke 1, 6, 71, watch this, listen good to this, Luke 1, 71, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. That is the purpose of salvation, so that you and I can be saved, okay? Saved from what? From mm -hmm. our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Because we all, our people have enemies, Mr. Hyper. People hate us. The fact that they labeled you Jamaican and labeled me Afro-American is a form of hatred. It's the business. Yes. And it keeps you and I separated. But we are one people, one race, the Israelites. I'm looking here, Bishop, on a quotation from... Uh, the official statement of the Immaculate Conception doctrine that is taught widely by the Roman Catholic Church as uh, some other churches are there and it says the Blessed Virgin Mary to have been from the first instant of her conception by a singular grace and privilege of Almighty God in view of merits of Christ Jesus the Savior of mankind preserved free from all stain of original sin essentially the immaculate conception is the belief that mary was protected from original sin uh, when uh, the catholic church here in this document that i'm reading from states uh, um about um speaks rather about the original sin um what are they talking about 
original sin, like when you read from the time of Genesis, when Eve uh, listened to the serpent in the garden, yes. which the scriptures say, um, we all have the sin nature in us. Mm -hmm. This is why in the book of, this is why David said, in sin, did my mother conceive me? Yes, yes, and yes. King David said that. Mm -hmm. David, Christ is a descendant of King David. Mm -hmm. Mary is also from that line. So where does the Catholic Church say that Mary was without sin when she herself offered a sin offering? If you notice the, the what you're reading, what scriptural reference do they give? Mm. No, it's just it's taken. Not, it's just, just taken from the document. The whiteness that they speak, the slaves will obey and listen. That's what they do. They know we've been brainwashed totally. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Mr. Hyper. Yes. Wisdom of Solomon and the Apocrypha. Watch this. This is prophetic. I, I need all your listeners to listen to this. This is so funny. It's so beautiful. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, talks about births on earth. It says... This is what Solomon wrote, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 1. I myself also am a mortal man, like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth, meaning Adam. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months, being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature. And the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. I was nursed in swaddling clothes, and that with cares. For there is no king that has any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into life, and the light going out. <laughs> so there is no such thing as immaculate birth in the Bible. It's not there. This was concocted by our enemies. <laughs> so, so, so why are we why are we holding on to such teachings then because um you're highlighting it now and uh, many others have also highlighted this uh, erroneous teaching why are we so gullible to these um uh, winds of doctrines because of white supremacy remember when you read isaiah what here's the prophecy of why we believe what the white man has taught us Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people, meaning us, draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, we all say we love God, but have removed their heart far from me. Meaning we don't care what the Bible says. Watch this. And their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. What men taught us the Bible? If we could not read and write in slavery, who taught us immaculate conception? The same man that oppressed us, that raped our mothers, our fathers, enslaved our brothers and sisters, he taught us the Bible. He taught us white man Jesus. He taught us immaculate conception. He taught us Christmas and Easter. He did these things to us. He destroyed our minds and spirits, Mr. Hyper. Now is the time of reawakening. We must awaken out of sleep. What's the root cause of this, though, Bishop Nathaniel? What's the root cause of this uh, trick, so to speak? And uh, what's the root cause of it? Be the root cause of all of this is our own sin, Mr. Hyper. If we had not sinned, we would not have been, A, cast out of the garden. We would not have gone into captivity. None of this, but that was God's plan from the beginning. So that he could usher in Christ. He had a divine plan from the beginning, Mr. Hyper. Mm -hmm. So you and I could not change. He wanted it to go down the way it happened. Yes. So now here in captivity, we must repent of our sins. Understand? Yes. Are you are you sensing an awakening of uh, the black race, so to speak? You have been uh, traveling, um, you know, all over the world. You were in the Bahamas, or was it uh, Bermuda recently? And then you went on to Ghana, among other places. Are you uh, um, a while on the ground, and you are uh, teaching um, the truth? Uh, are you picking up a sense that uh, uh, the black race, they are uh, somewhat waking out of their sleep and slumber? Oh, yes, Mr. Hyper. We are living in the greatest time on earth. According to Hosea, 
chapter 1, verse 10. Watch this. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together, and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. So we were taught we were not God's people when he labeled you Jamaican, and me Afro-American, and our brothers Haitian, and our other brothers, all these labels. But now we're being taught that we are the sons of the living God. Mm -hmm. So we are reawakening to the truth that we are Judah and Israel. We are coming together as one, Messiah, mm -hmm. and deliverance is near at hand. Uh, would you classify, and this is just um, somewhat of a side question, um, would you classify Barack Obama, the President of the United States, as an Israelite? Uh, he could possibly, well, his father was from Kenya, which is along the West Coast, so very well he could have been an Israelite. However, aside from regardless of that, he has lived and he has done the bidding of our oppressor. Mm -hmm. Just like during the time of Christ, the scribes and Pharisees, remember, they did the bidding of Rome. So the repentance is still open to him as it was to the Pharisees. Yes. If he's Israel, this makes up what I'm making reference to. Yes. Many times we like to say, oh, well, he's not Israel. I can't really look into his spirit and say that for 100% clarity. Mm -hmm. God can, though. God knows. Yes. Better stay on the cyber. Yes. So finally, before we wrap this week, Bishop, uh, you, you're saying this immaculate conception, it is a false teaching, it has no base in the Bible, and it is a Babylonian teaching, and this teaching was put um, uh, to Christendom by the Roman Catholic Church. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> that is exactly what has happened, that is the truth behind all this madness. Okay? And, uh, so what about the, the Israelites who are affiliated to these, uh, to this organization or uh, any other organization out there or religious group that has this uh, uh, kind of teaching and belief? Well, if you, if you, what you'll notice that if you find any Israelite group who has joined themselves to the Immaculate Conception Doctrine, you will find out that nine times out of ten, they are not keeping God's commandments. Because when you say Christ was not like you and I, you are, you are saying we cannot keep the commandments the way Christ did. I remember in Jamaica, if you look at some of the videos when I was there, a young man said to me, he said, it is impossible to keep the commandments, to keep God's laws. So I said to him, Mr. Hyper, I said, Leviticus 20.13 says, man shall not lie down with mankind as with womankind. I said, you mean it's impossible for you to not be homosexual? He starts out laughing and said, no, 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 that's easy, I can do that. Yes. <laughs> so I asked him, so where do you get this? He says, I don't know, I heard it somewhere that we can't keep the commandments. I said, shake that foolish lie, shake it from you. We can all keep the commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That is not hard. Thou shalt not steal. That is not hard. Thou shalt have no other God before me. That is not hard, Mr. Hyper. Mm -hmm. Just that. <laughs> and, pra and practice, uh, practice uh, becomes perfect, eh? Yes, yes, yes. That's, and that's what we're doing. We're all rehearsing the righteous acts of God. All of us. Not saying that brothers and sisters may not slip. Because I do know from coming up, I've seen men fall, I've seen women fall, but we must give them that hand up and return them to the living God. Right. Okay. Well, I want to thank you again, Bishop, for another inspiring discussion here on vibes radio very uh, inspiring eye-opening uplifting discussion here on the big v and uh we're looking forward to seeing you here in jamaica we're now in the month of may so we just want june to come and you know go on uh, yeah, it's merry way and we welcome july which is my month that you're going to be here in jamaica and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you i'm very excited to go Right. I love you all, and I can't wait to see you all. <laughs> all right, and how can you be contacted, my friend? Uh, yes, uh, www.israelunite.org. 
Or you can call me at 718 Right, and uh, July is just around the corner, so those who have uh, questions for you, uh, they will have their opportunity uh, to pose any amount of questions they want um, on uh, the teachings um, that they have heard here on Vibes Radio, among other topics that you will be discussing um, here in uh, Jamaica in July. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Hyper, and... We have a school opening up in Jamaica. I just got to get the address. I'll give it to you, Lord Willow, next time. Yes. We have a school in Jamaica. All praise to the most high. Mm. So we just don't talk about it. We walk about it. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, sir. And it, all right, sir. Well, um, you're a bit far away, so we want you to fly about it. And when you touch down in Jamaica, you walk about and teach it. All right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bishop Nathaniel. God bless, sir. See you okay. next week. All been well. And take care of yourself. And say hi to all the brothers over on the, uh, the other side of town for me. Yes, sir. You do the same. All right. So, all, all, all the best to you. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.